And open your Bible right there in Joshua chapter number 4. Uh, this morning, Joshua in chapter number 4. Just with God's help, we're going to be looking at just some things right here that the Lord has been uh, taught me. And I've been speaking to me about. And I want to share with you uh, this morning. <coughs> Joshua in chapter number uh, 4. If you think about things that are going on right here, right here in the book of Joshua, the children of Israel have already crossed uh, uh, to the other side uh, 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 to get the promise, to possess the promised land. And uh, 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 they are about here in, in chapter number four, they are about to cross, sorry, to possess the promised land, the, the promised land that God had promised to the children of Israel. For 40 years, they've been right there in the wilderness. Uh, God provided for them. God was with them. God showed himself mighty to them. And God was with them all of this time to protect them, to provide for them, to love them, and to keep them safe. Just for 40 years. And now they are about to cross right there the promise that God made to their father Abraham at this time. And this is what's going on right here in Joshua in chapter number 4. And uh, uh, the Bible says, we're going to start being, reading, uh, reading right here from verse number uh, 1 and 4, where the Bible says, And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe, amen. And command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet, uh, uh, the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stone, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place wherein ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called uh, 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 the twelve men when he had that he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them. Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God in the midst of Jordan, and take you up, every man of you, a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. That this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off, before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, when it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off. And this stone shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan, as the Lord spake unto Joshua according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto a place where they lodge and lay them down there. I want to preach to you the title of this message this morning, Show Others Your Pile of Stones. Show Others Your Pile of Stones. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you that we could worship you in spirit and in truth the way that your word tells us to. And we come before thee this morning knowing that without you we could do nothing. And we pray especially this morning that you uh, uh, save the lost. But overall, we pray that our hearts be, may be encouraged this morning. And that you be lifted up. And that you uh, receive all honor and glory for everything that we say and do in this place. Please, Lord, help me with my speech. And I pray that you help me not to say any, of, any foolish things, any of my words, but yours. And I pray also that uh, you continue to be with our pastor and continue to be with our church and with those that uh, have been not been able to be here and those who are on vacation. pray that you continue to be with them. We love you. Thank you for everything. We commend the rest of this uh, time in your hands and we ask you all this thing in Jesus' name. Amen. As I said before, the Israelites had waited 40 years, but now the time has come. 40 years, but now the time has come. It's an exciting moment as they cross Jordan River right here. Behind them, they live uh, 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 the, the deadly desert right there, the, the, the place where uh, they were for 40 years. Now they have lived there behind right there. 
uh, uh, all the, the funerals that happened for 40 years to those people that were, did not believe God, those people that did not want to follow God, they died in the wilderness for 40 years right there. Uh, those things were behind now. Now they're about to cross the Jordan River to the place where the God promised them. Other thing that they probably uh, were leaving behind was slavery in Egypt. But this now the experience was by gone. It was gone. All right. They they remember how those uh, Egyptian army right there they sank right there in the Red Sea. They remember how God uh, uh, was good to them. How He parted the the Red Sea and they went forward right there. And now God is doing it again right here in the Jordan River. During this time, at this time, we're about when they were about to cross the Jordan River. It was a time where the, where the, where the river at uh, this time was very uh, 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 strong. So the waters were not just allowing anybody just to cross just by, by nothing. But God did a miracle right here. Before then, they lay a richer uh, 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 land that they couldn't even imagine themselves. A land that was absolutely free to them. They didn't have to plant any vineyard. They didn't have to build any house. They, have, they didn't have to do anything. It was given to them freely. It was given to them freely right there. Just get it. That's how it was. And God have taken out all the, uh, the inhabitants, most of the inhabitants of the land of Cana, and now he's given them, the children of Israel, this land. Now it is theirs by God's promise. It must have felt uh, surreal to finally stand in Cana, if you think about it, right? All this promise that God has promised for many years uh, uh, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and now he's right there, they are Right there in the land that God promised them. It probably, as I say, it probably was some, something like when you got your first home. I never got my first home, so I don't know how it, but I have heard stories. All right, how it is. How you go and when they open the door with the key, when they give you the key, well, you have the key now, and you open the door, and open the doors, it's yours. Right? What are you going to do with it? Right? What are you going to do uh, uh, with your house? And that's probably how it happened right here in, during this time. Maybe they were shouting, they were praising, they were, they were a, 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 a gladness right here because God has fulfilled his promise. God has done it again. That's what happened right here. And, and people were excited about it. And we know that they probably were excited. They were shouting about because when God parted the Red Sea, as they crossed to the other side, the Bible said that Moses sang a song and, and then uh, uh, Miriam sang a song. Why? Because they were so thankful that God has uh, fulfilled his promise. And there is no doubt about it that right here it happened the same way. As they crossed the Jordan River right here, the, that's exactly what happened. The joy has been magnified, as I say, by recent events. When they arrived at the Jordan River, they found that this river, it was uh, 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 the, the flood of the river, the currents were, uh, didn't allow anybody, they were strong, they didn't allow anybody just to go to the other, to the other side. The river was impassable. This crossing was impossible, but God intervened, performing a miracle the same way that he did right in Exodus. God rolled back the waters of Jordan River, just as he had done it in the Red Sea. God showed his, himself mighty one more time. In the same way, to assure his people that he was good and true to his word. He was good and true to his word. Imagine there were, as I say, sun and shouting and all of that. But there was also one important act that calls our attention right here this morning as we look at right here in the Bible. After they cross the Jordan River right there. Look at what the Bible says one more time. Right in Joshua chapter number 4. That's where we are. Verse number 1 and 2. Look at what the Bible says. Verse number 2, starting verse number 2, the Bible said, Take you twelve men out of the people of every tribe a man, a command, and command ye them, saying, Take you hands out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood forth, firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, 
and leave them in the lodging place where he shall lodge this night. So this was a commandment from God. God gave it right here. Twelve men got heavy stones to their shoulder to from the middle of the Jordan River and put them out right there to build a memorial right there for what was the reason of this? What was the purpose? Well, the answer is, as we read it right there uh, 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 in verse number 6, it said that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Verse number 7, And ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When he passed over Jordan, and the waters of Jordan were cut off, and this stone shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. Because stones, on, if you think they natural, they just don't come together one to each other, right? If you see sometime like a pile of stones, they just didn't come to each other on top. Somebody put them there, right? Stones, if you go to the river or some, some places, just the stones are going to be just in different places, right? But if you find them that they are a pile of stone, it's fixed. Guess what? Someone did it, right? Someone put them, put them like that. And this is exactly what they did uh, 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 this time. But the reason was that in time to come, people was going to ask about, what is this? Why is this pile of stone right here in this place? Why is the reason for it? All right? And, and then they wouldn't have an answer for that. Therefore, I want to propose to you to, uh, this morning that God wants the next generation to know what great things God has done for you. Let me say it one more time. God wants the next generation to know what great things God has done for you. For you. The question is this morning, are you building a memorial for, some, for the next generation that is going to come? Are you doing something for God and God is doing something for you that in the times and years to come, people will point to your life, point at the things in your life you have done with your life and they'll say, what is this about? What are you going to tell them? Are you going to have an answer? Are you going to say, you know what, I did that. I was a great man. I have a lot of strength and I did all of that with the power of my strength of what because I was able to do it because I was strong back then. Or you're going to be able to say, you know what, back then I was this way, but God did. God was the one who helped me do these things. God was the one who helped me go through these things, and God was there for me. What's the answer that you're going to give for the next generation that will come? First of all, uh, uh, this morning we're going to see three things. First of all, uh, what do these things, uh, what these stones mean? First of all, it means that everything we do must be for God. First of all, we're going to see this morning that everything we do must be for God. Everything you do with your life must be for God. And obviously right here in this place that we see God was the one who commanded Joshua to take these stones and to make a pile right there for a memorial. Say, that when children and the next generation will ask what are these stones about, what these things mean, then you're going to tell them. Then you're going to have an answer for, for, for this that you have built. See in that rock of pile here in, uh, 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 and here in the story, the people of Israel will know clearly that they had not crossed Jordan on their own. They will know for sure. They will remember that they not, did not cross the Jordan River on their own. Was God the one who helped them? Was God the one who parted the Jordan River? God, was God the, was the one who was with them? So it was going to be a reminder for them that it was not on their own. And I wonder how many times you and I in our life, we try to do things on our own. Knowing that we have a great God. We have a heavenly Father. That He's the one that could do it for us. And how many times we, as I say, with our own life, we try to do that. In my house, I have this in my house. For, I have a, how do you call this? License plate. All right. I have my translators right here. All right, so I have a license plate right here in my house. 
And for you, it might, might just mean another license plate, right? But for me, it means a lot, right? It's very special for me and my family. And we, we, we have decided we're going to keep this for however long we live. And when people will ask, what is this about, <laughs> right? Well, what, what is this about? Then I'm going to have an answer that say, you know what? God did it. God was the one who gave me this. Right? Some of you might, 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 might not know, but I have, a, I have a truck. I mean, I never in my life probably was going to be able to afford a truck. But God gave me a truck. God used someone to give me a truck. And I kept that license, that license plate right there. Because I wanna, uh, uh, when my children grow, when, when Esther grows up and she will ask, what is this? I will say, God was there. He was the one who provided for me. You know why? Because uh, your daddy was faithful to God. He was serving God. Therefore, God provides. I want to I wanna be able to tell her that. What kind of memorial, what kind of memorial, what kind of things are you building? When people ask about things that are happening in your life, things that you have in your house, and they will ask you, what is this about? What would you answer them? Would you even remember the blessings that God has given you? Would you even remember the things that God gave you? Some of you are right here this morning, you probably are like, well, yeah, I, dro- I drove here, right? I'm fine. I feel healthy and all of that. But would you, may I remind you that you are here because God brought you here. You're, you, 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 do, you, do you realize that your car couldn't probably or, uh, wouldn't be able to start this morning? Would you realize that this morning you probably wouldn't be able to get up this morning and open your own eyes and walk and drink and eat and talk and see? It wouldn't be for God. You're here because God brought you here. You see, when we see uh, 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 with, uh, with the, with, uh, uh, not with our own eyes, but when we see through God's eyes, things are different. Things are different. Those, strand, those uh, stones back then, they cry out, God did this. By his hands we crossed uh, 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 this river. By his power and faithfulness we have accomplished this. Obviously, this pile of stone right here for uh, the unbeliever was mean nothing. For people that would just pass by right there, that was no Israelite, they mean nothing. Just another pile of stone. But for the Israelites, this when they saw this, they they knew it, it was not. This was not on our own. We crossed the Jordan River because God was with us, because God helped us, because God parted the 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 the, the river, because God was with us. That's why. And it's because of God that we have accomplished this. Now I remind you the Bible says in Psalm 127 verse 1, Unless the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. You see, unless we do things for God, the things that we do in our own are in vain. That's what God is saying. That's the ESB, Ernesto Standard Version. All right? So, so that's, 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 that's what he's saying. Unless you do the things that you do for God, if you don't do it for God, it's in vain. That's what God is saying. It's in vain. What things are you doing in your own? Or what things are you doing for God? If you're doing it for God, remember, God will reward you for that. If you're doing not for God... It will be in vain. That's what he's saying. Also, the Bible says in Zechariah uh, uh, 4, 6, Not by might, not by power, but my, but my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So God is saying, it's not by what you think. It's not by what you, what you think you could do with your own, with your own power, with your own strength. It's not by that, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. It's by him and for him. That we are right here, and, and, and for him is that we do things with our lives. Are you building a memorial to speak to others? Are you building for yourself? 
I will, if you do it, if you're building for yourself, let me tell you that it will die with you. It will die with you. Nobody will remember. But if you're building for the Lord, everybody will remember. What do you think that uh, even now, it has uh, passed years and years that these great missionaries had died, but we still remember them. All the things that they did for the Lord, or the majority of them, or the greatest thing that they did for the Lord. Why? Because those things are still alive. They build a memorial. And now we remember and we say, look at what God did for them. Look at how God was with them. Look at how God provided for them. You see? And that's what God wants for you and I. That's what God wants for this church. That's what God wants for your family. That's what God wants for your children and for your children's children. That's what God wants for each and every one of us that everything we do, we must, it must be for the Lord. It must be for the Lord. Or the war, otherwise it will be in vain. So first of all, we see that uh, these stones mean that everything we, we do must be for God. Second of all, uh, this morning, it means that we have a missionary purpose. It means that we have a missionary purpose. What I mean with this is, right here, that you, that you are going to be able to tell others. And that's what God has saved us in this place, right? That's what God has uh, brought us to this place. That's what God brought us to himself so we can tell others so we don't live by, for ourselves, but we live for others. And that's what Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. And he bled and died right there on the cross. Why? Because he was not thinking about himself. He was thinking about you. And let me tell you uh, something, dear friend, if you're here to, uh, this morning and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, uh, 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 meaning that, that there was a time in your life when you knew that you were lost, that without God you, you were not going anywhere, but you were going to this place called hell, and you repented from your sin, and you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and He came in, and He made His abode in you, and He lived now in you. Therefore, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. It's a new creature. If I've ever been in a, a time in your life when you have, then when you, when you, if you have never been a time in your life when you have done this, therefore let me tell you something, that today, this morning, before this service starts, you could come to the Lord Jesus Christ and know Him personally. And you can start building your memorial. You can start. You see, everything must start with God. You can't build a memorial if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You can't do that. It will die with you. But if you build a memorial, first of all, it must start, it must start with God. If you don't know the Lord Jesus, as I say, today will be a wonderful day. Wonderful day that you may come to know the Lord Jesus Christ right here. Uh, our, the manner of our churches, uh, uh, that a man with a man, a woman with a woman, they're going to take a Bible and show you from the Bible how you can know for sure that you are on your way to heaven. That's our, our goal. <laughs> that you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior today. But if you know him, may the Lord encourage you through his word this morning. We have a mission here. We have no mission here but the Great Commission. God has given us a Great Commission right there. Go and preach the gospel to every creature. To every creature. These heap of stones, it was a reminder of what God did for his people. If you think about, if you study about the Jewish, uh, the Jewish uh, history, the Jewish, the Jewish tradition, they, they make a great deal about teaching the next generation. They make a great deal about teaching the next, the next generation to influence them with, uh, 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 and how to serve Jehovah. They, they, that's, what, that's what they were about. And God commanded them to do that. And if you realize that every time that they, that they uh, 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 fell, that they missed to teach the next generation, and the next generation was in trouble. 
the next generation was in trouble, and God uh, was, was not with them, and God judged them, and God uh, sent other, other armies right there and destroyed them, and God uh, was not with them. Why? Because they did not teach the next generation. And may the Lord help us, uh, you and I as, a, as a parents, maybe if you are here, if you are a parent, uh, may the Lord help you, may the Lord help me, no, not to be like that, but to do the things that uh, God has commanded us, to teach the next generation so they could know who God is, so they could serve God, and they, they could follow God with their lives. The Bible is in Exodus chapter 12, verse 26 and 27, And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What means ye by this service? That ye shall say, It is a sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the house of the children of Israel in Egypt, when, the, uh, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bow the head and worship. So right here is a picture how God commanded them uh, to, to celebrate this feast of the Passover. He said, we want your children in time to come. They will ask, what is this feast about? What does this mean about? Then, then you will remind them that uh, when you were in Egypt right there, you were slave. You didn't have anybody. Nobody cares about you. But God did. And God came. And, he, uh, and when you put blood right there on the, on the, on the post of your, of your doors, uh, 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 the angel of, of death, he passed over right Right there, the angel passed over right there, and he said uh, that you will remind them that God had was merciful to you, and he passed over, and, and, and therefore this is what this feast is about. So that's what one of the things that God told the children of Israel to teach the next generation. The Bible says also in, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 20, and when thy sons ask thee in time to come, saying, What mean? The testimonies and the statutes and the judgment which the Lord our God has commanded you, then thou shalt say unto thy, unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. You see right here, God is teaching them in how to teach the next genera generation. In Psalm, 100, uh, in Psalm 71, verse 17 and 18, the Bible says, Oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and I, and I hitherto have I declared thy wondrous work. Now also when I am old and uh, gray-headed, O oh God, forsake me not until I have showed thy strength unto this generation, and thy power to everyone that is to come. Here is a, a, another example that God is saying, uh, the, the psalmist right, is saying, please don't let me die until I influence the next generation. Please don't let me die until I show the next generation your power, your, your mercy, your goodness. Please don't let me die until I have built this memorial for them. That's what he's saying right here. The psalmist right here is asking God. As I said uh, 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 just a few minutes ago to the unbeliever, to other people outside from the, from the children of Israel, this pile of stone right here, it means nothing. It means nothing to them. It's like if I show you, you should take this into your house, you're like, it's just another one. Right? But for me, it does mean a lot. It was the same for the children of Israel right there, for all the people that was no Israelite that would just pass by this pile of stone right there. When they look at it, it look cool. Maybe it was pretty, maybe it was not. I don't know. They just passed by, didn't mean nothing. Oh, the children of Israel passed by right there. They have their children right there behind them. And the dad was walking right there, and the children was, you know, children like to play with stones, right? Like to play with rocks. They like to see things and all of that. They'll ask questions, right? Maybe right there was a dad just walking by, and then they saw this pile of stone right there, 12 stones, right there like, Daddy, what this means? What is this about? Why are they right here? Why are they not in the river? Why are they right here? Oh, yes, he will, probably he will, all right, there, let me tell you something about, I just got it right there, just bring him along right there, sit right there, and he will start telling the story. Oh, how did it happen? How God was there. Oh, son, if you realize this, how God, 
part of this, this river. You know, when we came to this river, the water that was just overflowing right there. Nobody could have gone to the other side. But as soon as these priests, they were bringing the Ark of the Covenant, and as soon as they put their feet right there, in the, in, in just on the shore of the river, guess what? The water, they just part out. And this water just stopped, right? and it was dry. And then they were right there in the middle, and they, the, these priests, they stay right there in the middle, and guess what? All of these two, two, two million people right there just start walking, right there, dry land, crossing the Jordan River. Wouldn't you like to hear a story like that? Wouldn't you like to hear a story like that? But this was a true story. It was not a fairy tale. It was a true story. It just passed by. So we just crossed all over, all of us. And after the last one passed, and then these 12 men, they just came and gathered this big stone that Joshua told them and just put it on the shoulder, each one of them, a big stone, the biggest one that they could have a uh, uh, hold. And they just put them out, and these are the stones right here. I just want to tell you how God was with us. God parted the red, the, the, this uh, Jordan River. And this pile of stone right here is for you to know that God was with us, that he provided for us, that he uh, uh, encouraged us. When we saw God right there in that, I mean, there was nothing. We knew that if we go to this land, Nobody will come against us. I mean, think about that, right? Think about that story, right? How this dad probably taught his children right here. What do you have to tell to your children when they ask you about something that you have in your house? Do you have something in your house that it reminds you about God's goodness? Or it reminds you about some wicked thing? <laughs> In your life. Right? Or well, you have something right there to show them, to say, you know what? You know, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't do this without God. The only thing that we know is because God was there and he provided. That's the only reason we have this. That's the only reason we could afford this. That's the only reason we could have go to this place. This is the only reason that we could do these things. That's the only reason. Because God was with us. So it was a constant reminder that God, the God of Israel, cared for his people, keeps his promises, goes before them in victory, and overall, never fails. It was a constant reminder. May it all help you and I to build memorials, to be a constant reminder, the same way that God cares for you, that God keeps his promise, that God goes before you uh, with victory, and overall, that God never fails his promise. May it all help you and I to do these things, to build memorial so we can remind ourselves what a witness that you and I could give to the world, right? That we have a great God. He cares for us. He keeps his promise. He goes before us in victory, and he never fails. Number three, uh, uh, this morning, and, and lastly, not only this uh, pile of stones, it means that everything we do must be for God. Number two, also, that um, it means that we have a missionary purpose. And this purpose is to tell others about what God has done for us. But number three, also, it means that we must change. We must change our view of who God is if, he want, if we want to go with God. We must change our view of who God is. You see, for many people in this world, they have, a, they have a wrong view of who God is. They believe that it's just this old man right there that he just is all the time with his sticks, and if you do wrong, he just uh, 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 right there spank you or whatever. Right? That, that, that's not our God. We have a wonderful God that he's not just an, a little old man right there. No, he's real. He's real, and he's there for you. 
and he cares for you, and he never fails, and he's going to keep his promise, and he's going to keep blessing you, and he's going to keep giving you good things daily. That's our God. So we must change our view if we want uh, 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 God to go with us. Right here in verse number 8, look over there in verse number 8, right there. <clears throat> the Bible says, The children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan. As the Lord spake unto Joshua, according to the numbers of the tribes of the children of Israel, and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. So right here, we see that they, they have to change. They have to obey God. They have to, to do what God has asked them to do. The stones uh, uh, out of, the, of Jordan marked a, 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 a movement of God among his people. These stones testify of the willingness of the people to live what they have known in order to go with God. This, these stones, this, this is what it was. It, they were willing to go with God. They were willing to take a chance, in other words. They were, they were willing to, to, by faith, go through this Jordan River. They were willing to, to do uh, and to obey God and take God at His word. They were willing to. Question, are you willing to? Are you willing to stay, take a stand for God? Are you willing to take a, take a step of faith in your life? Are you willing to believe God, that God is going to do the impossible with whatever thing that you're going through in your life? Are you willing to take the next step in your Christian life? Are you willing to? That's what the, the children of Israel did. They were willing to, willing to take this chance and take God at his word and by faith go through the Jordan River. And that's exactly what they did, obviously, also in the Red Sea. There are things that uh, will come in our lives that we cannot yet see how God will do. Will do it. But we believe He is faithful. There are things in your life that will come, right? How many of you knew that uh, COVID-19 was going to come in 2019? 2020 or 19? When was it? 20? How many of you knew that that was going to come? Nobody, right? But it came. The things in our lives that we have no idea, we have no control over, we have no idea what's going to come. But are you willing to believe that God is going to protect you? Are you willing to believe by faith that God is going to be with you? Are, we living, are, are, you, are you willing to buy by faith that God is going to provide for you, that God is going to give you a job, that God is going to take care of you, and God is going to take care of your family, and God is going to be with you? Are you willing? Are you willing by faith to obey Him? Right? It becomes, it becomes personal, right? It becomes personal. Also, they, are, they had made a uh, break with the, with the past at this time. In other words, they were saying, we are we, we're never going to even think of going back again to Egypt. At this time, they were saying, we're going we're to stop even about thinking about going back to Egypt. All right? And, and may the Lord help us, you and I, uh, as Christians, just to not even think about the things that we did before we were saved, before we came to know the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, but not going back, but going forward after God himself. The Lord help us not to think about that way. And that's what the children of Israel, that's what they were saying as they crossed the Jordan River. The promised land was right there, given to them. They were willing to say, we are not going back to Egypt anymore. We have our own. We are not going back to Egypt. The next generation is a reminder of what God had done in history. But this reminder must also strengthen their faith and draw them closer to God, to Jehovah. Look at verse number 9. It's very interesting. Verse number 9. Right there. Joshua chapter 4, verse number 9. The Bible says, Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of Jordan. This was another pile of stone. All right? This was not the same one. It was another one. 
Verse number 8, this Joshua was the one who built it himself. Verse number 9, And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests were, uh, uh, which uh, bear the Ark of the Covenant stood. And they are there until this day. So this was, there, there was another pile of stones right here in the midst of Jordan that nobody could see it. All right? After they crossed the Jordan, the Jordan River's water, they flowed together again. And when they would come right there to the, to the river right there, to, to, the, to the bank of the river, nobody could see this pile of stone. What does that mean? Well, it means that when you came to know the Lord Jesus Christ and you believe Him by faith, and you came and received Him as your Lord and Savior, all the things were passed away. All the things are under the blood. They are under the blood of Almighty God. And nobody could see it. And that's, and that's exactly what happened right here. That things that were there, nobody could see it. But they were there. But they were there. Interesting, right? That we don't see that, that God actually commanded Joshua or anything. But also, it mu God must have told Joshua because God didn't uh, uh, tell Joshua not to do it either. Right? But we see right here, there was a constant reminder. All of these things that they did was a constant reminder that they have a great God. And the God was with them. And that God is faithful and true to his word and his promise. What about you today, this morning? All right, we're going to make a personal, we'll make an application here. All right? We talk about how the children of Israel, they receive everything right here for free, all of, to all of them. They just got what God has promised them. All right? God was good to them. Has God been good to you? Has he been good to you? Amen. Well, you are here, so yes, he's been good to you. I don't see anybody that is hungry here, right? If you're hungry, we have a lot of bread there. All right? I don't see anybody that's hungry here. Has God provided for you your daily bread? Yes, he has, right? I see everybody right here probably drove coming this place to this place, right? Has God been good to you, providing for your needs, transportation, all of that? Yes, he has. Right? So if God has been good to you and me, why is it that sometimes we try to do things for our own, in our own, and for our own? That people, when people see things, they all say, well, look at what he did or she did or so and so did. Right? Right? And I say, look at what God is doing through the life of so and so. See the difference? And that's what you and I want as a Christian. So other people could see and say, God is doing this through this person, or God did this, or God provided this, or God gave this to so-and-so. The Lord help you and I not to take credit for things that we do, but actually give the credit to the only one who deserves the credit, God. Are you building your pile of stones. You see, to build a pile of stones means that you're going to be faithful to God. You're going to be faithful to God. Right? In every area, every aspect of your life. You're going to pray. All right? Pile of stones is like you're going to pray. You're going to read your Bible. You're going to be faithful to God's house. You're going to be faithful with uh, all the, the, the things God gives you, you're going to be a good steward of all the things God gives you. See, those are stones that when people or children or your own children see, they will say, God was there. See, those are pile of stones. What kind of pile of stones are you building? You building something for your own that will die with you? Are you building something that will last for eternity. What kind of pile of stones are you building? It will help you, church. It will help you and I to please God with our lives and the things we say, things, and do. Let's pray.